Miami leads the all-time series 35-32. But Florida State has won the last two, including a 45-3 win in South Florida last year. Here comes Deuce Span. Did well to get to the 20. They made contact with him well shy of that. And here comes Jordan Travis. In his sixth year college football, one year at Louisville, came here to Tallahassee in 2019. Is one of the great success stories in college football. Struggled early on. Booed off the field a few years ago. Thought about transitioning to wide receiver. Now he's a Florida State legend. Trying to be the first Seminole quarterback to beat Miami as the starter three years in a row. His 37th career start. They are 26 and 10 with him under center as he starts for the 26th game in a row. With Trey Benson, the running back. Short set. It is Benson wide open and out of bounds near the 40 yard line out at the 38 for a gain of 17. Miami is highly aggressive defensively. Pressure on the first play by the defensive coordinator, Lance Gidry. Travis gets it out immediately for a nice game. Playing without one of their starting cornerbacks, Daryl Porter, injured last week in their loss at NC State. Jaden Davis, who left last week's game, is the other starting corner. They had each started every game so far this year. Benson swung down by Jafari Harvey. Benson, part of the story, he played for Miami's Mario Cristobal when Cristobal was the head coach at Oregon. And when Cristobal left to go back to his alma mater, Benson went in the transfer portal. He had been battling knee injuries. Miami didn't want him. Benson ran for 128 last year against his former coach in that route in Miami Gardens. Deep throw down the sideline and a step too long for Jaheim Bell. A good decision there by Jordan Travis, but with Bell, who's an excellent tight end, not quite the same level of top end speed that you would see from Keon Coleman or one of those wide receivers. Got to be a little bit more air underneath it to allow him to run underneath it. And that's a big story today as well. Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson are back in action. There's Coleman, their leading receiver. Neither one of them played last week in the win at Pittsburgh. And they struggled for a while without them. One, 24 to seven. First time they scored under 30 all year. Under pressure, Travis got it off. Caught, but it does not appear to be enough for the first down. Johnny Wilson came back to the ball for a seven yard gain. He's two yards short of the first down. Wesley Bissink, the linebacker, put the pressure on. And Jared Harrison Hunt here engaged with the right guard, Dimitri Manuel. They kind of get a little bit crossed up as he breaks free inside, forces Travis to his left. It was a nice throw, but not enough to convert the third down. Alex Mastromano in the punt. Xavier Restrepo back for it. He wears a different number as a punt returner. We don't want to have duplicate numbers on the field. Great bounce for Mastromano, and they're going to down it inside the two. They have such outstanding special teams coached by John Papuchas, and it's always been a point of emphasis for head coach Mike Norvell. And a big mistake there by Restrepo. You have to field that punt as he lets it bounce it around the 12, and the progressive pylon cam will show you well done by the Seminole special teams unit to drop it inside the two. It was A.J. Cottrell who batted it back for Coach Papuchas. They are tremendous on special teams and have been for all four years. Under this Mike Norvell staff with Papuchas, the special teams coordinator. So a tougher spot now than it even would have been for Emery Williams, the true freshman, starting from his own two. Faked it to a fellow true freshman. He wants to launch it deep, and it's just a little bit too far for Colby Young. Well, they said he won't be phased by it, and they have him dropping back into the end zone and launching one deep on his first throw of this game from a couple of hours away in Milton, Florida. 
led them to that victory against Clemson. They came from behind. They were down 17 to 7 in that one. Leaned heavily on the run. They'll probably ask him to do more today. As Molly said, be bold. They're going to have to. And this Florida State secondary is very good, and it'll be tight coverage most of the afternoon. Mark Fletcher, the running back. He's emerged as the starter in recent weeks. The old offensive lineman Cristobal likes that straight ahead running style. He got four. He ran for a career high 115 for Coach Cristobal last week at NC State. Five and six head to head against Florida State. He was three and one as a player, an offensive lineman under Jimmy Johnson and Dennis Erickson. Played on a couple of national title teams. Back in the heyday of both of these programs. Crowd going crazy. Cristobal told his team, survive the first five or six plays in the atmosphere and you'll settle in quickly. Again, Williams in the end zone. Fires off the hands of Restrepo. Should have had it. He would have had a first down. And they were lucky it didn't get picked off by Akeem Dent. Really well protected. And the throw looked as if it was on the mark. Just a touch wide as Restrepo gave it a great effort. But nearly intercepted as it was tipped up. And Dent got a couple hands on it as well. Fortunate break there for Miami. Dylan Joyce, the true freshman from Australia, almost standing on the back line of the end zone. Keon Coleman at the 50-yard line. Line drive kick, and effective and a fair catch made by Coleman, retreating back to the 45. 50-yard punt. We proud Taco Bell live my student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. These FSU students are getting ready to audition for the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. Really as early as Thursday, they were kind of <laughs> pre-gaming. Oh, yeah. College town just down the road. Down to the pistol, Jordan Travis. The Trey Benson, the running back. And Benson patiently ahead. For a four-yard game, you had a veteran offensive line. Left to right, Darius Washington, Casey Roddick, Maurice Smith, Demetri Emanuel, Jeremiah Byers. A combined 198 career starts. The least experience is Washington, the left tackle, and today's his 33rd career start. Dump to the tight end, Marquiston Douglas. Very close to the first down, about a yard short. They love their tight ends. They're highly efficient when targeting the tight ends, too, with Jaheim Bell, Marquiston Douglas, and Kyle Morlock. It's three guys that have very different skill sets, but extremely effective in the pass game. Third down and one, four minutes gone by. The option toward the short side of the field. Looked like Benson was in trouble. Now it's the Canes who have a problem. Touchdown, Trey Benson. They are marking the ball out of bounds, it seems, back at the 39-yard line. Nobody on the field realizes it, nor does this crowd. The only on the field is the ball carrier. Yep, he's out. out of bounds at the 39-yard line. It'll be Florida State's ball, first and 10. No question about it. So instead of the touchdown, it's a seven-yard gain for Benson, who's a big play maker. Such a big body with great burst, as you could see just how fast he was once he got through the initial defense. He also can make you miss, too. He'll be spelled occasionally, though, by Lawrence Toa Feely, who's in the ball game now at running back. Very effective pass catcher. They really do a good job of utilizing him in that aspect. They're going to stick with the pistol. Mike Norvell, the head coach, calls the plays. With plenty of help from the coordinator, Alex Atkins, who also coaches the offensive line. 
The fake to Tawafili over the middle off the hands of his receiver and incomplete. Intended for Kentron Portier, who has only one catch all year. What's so difficult about defending Mike Norvell is the way he makes the run plays look exactly like the pass plays. Downhill run was working a little bit earlier, ran it on first 10, open this drive, and a play that looks remarkably similar, and you fake it, you run the in-breaking route right behind it, and it's just off the mark for Portier. 8-13 and 13 in his first two seasons after he came over from Memphis, and you saw the graphic. 19-3. and three. Winners of 15 in a row over the last two seasons. Third longest active winning streak in the country. Toa Feely, a hard-fought couple, taken down by Corey Flagg. Only Georgia, which will try to win its 27th in a row tonight against Ole Miss. And Washington, winners of 16 in a row, have longer winning streaks than Florida State. He's done a great job with this program, just slowly developing a lot of the young guys that are now playing pivotal roles and chasing a championship. He's done very well in the transfer portal as well. Douglas is wide open, has the first down, and is tackled around the legs at the 22 by Cam Kitchens, the outstanding safety. 16 yards and a Seminole first down. And there's nobody out there with Douglas. They put the tight end out wide. They didn't communicate there defensively. He's completely uncovered. Travis hits him for a nice game. And now Florida State going with some tempo. They're in field goal range at the very least for Ryan Fitzgerald. Leaning heavily on the pistol so far. Toa Feely thrown down by Leonard Taylor III, part of a Miami defensive front that is headlined by Reuben Bain, a tremendous freshman, true freshman, out of Miami who was recruited by Florida State. Knowles had him up here for a visit. Last year, one week later, he committed to Miami. They knew he was probably going to go to Miami. His brother Reggie is a graduate assistant on the Hurricane staff. It's a screen with a flag down. It's an incomplete pass. Corey Flag had coverage on Keziah Holmes. Adam Savoie is the referee. Outside, defense number 20, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, the second down. James Williams, the safety, will play around the line of scrimmage, clearly lined up offside. Yeah, and trying to be in press coverage, but a little bit too close there as he's unaware of where he's at in the neutral zone. That's Gidry. He's been talking all week long to his defense about defending screens. One was coming right there from Florida State. Looked like they had it pretty well sniffed out. So Got to be real mindful of that when playing against Mike Norvell. He said they spent all day Monday working on defending the wide variety of Florida State screens. Travis over the middle. Caught first down inside the 10. Jaheim Bell. The transfer from South Carolina with a nine-yard game. He's going to be a problem for this Miami defense. They like to play a lot of man coverage, Miami does. So against man, if I have a tight end that's a matchup nightmare, that's where I want to look as a quarterback. So it's going to be very difficult for Miami to account for Jaheim Bell all afternoon. Jeremiah Byers came off the field injured. Les Harris came in for him, so they shift Darius Washington from left tackle to right tackle. Benson. Long time for a whistle. He got stacked up after a two-yard pickup. Benson played one year for Mario Cristobal, excuse me, Greg, at Oregon. And Transferred here to Florida State, now in his second year for the Knolls. He's developed into an incredibly well-rounded back and does a great job in this part of the field. He always keeps those legs driving and the yards are hard to get. Benson up the middle to the goal line, spinning, touchdown! Great job there in the middle by 
Maurice Smith. He's engaged with the defensive tackle. Leonard Taylor throws him to the ground, goes right to the right side of him. Benson does, and he continues to drive as he spins forward to find Pater. That was a great effort run by Trey Benson. Ryan Fitzgerald for the extra point. He's made all 45 this season. He's still perfect. Ten play, 55 yard drive capped by Trey Benson, redshirt junior from Greenville, Mississippi. It ABC College Football is presented by Tubbs. Taco game day heartburn fast and love food back. Use as directed. And in part by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. They're shooting in here. We have some of us reaching for the Tums. The U.S. Special Operations Command Paracommandos from McDill Air Force Base in Tampa. Three of them parachuted in pre-game. Uh, this Veterans Week, a heartfelt thank you to all the men and women who have served our country throughout the years and those who are doing so right now. The Fitzgerald kickoff is a touchback. Veterans Week presented by USAA. So second possession for Miami. This time Emory Williams not in the shadow of his own goal post. They started their own two. And went three and out. Highly important for Miami today to impose their will of the line script. They have to be able to run the ball downhill. Florida State's excellent on the edges. They have great athleticism, but they have to be able to attack the defensive tackles which is a three-man rotation for the Seminoles. Mark Fletcher, the running back. They want to pound the run. There's a flag down before the snap for a false start against the Hurricanes. False start. Offense number 61. Five-yard penalty. First start. The true freshman, Francis Maui Noah, out of American Samoa IMG Academy, Part of the best recruiting class in the history of Miami football. They have 15 players, including Maui Noah, in the ESPN Top 300. Same five starters have opened every game on the offensive line this year for Miami. One of only 11 FBS teams to do that. Fletcher bounced outside. Fletcher, another one of those highly talented freshmen, shoved across the boundary by Renardo Green. And some whooping back and forth after an eight-yard play. And that was a great job by Xavier Restrepo, too. He started on the right side of the formation. He went all the way back around to the left and got a nice block for Fletcher. Watch Restrepo pulling around. You see an undersized wide receiver get that much engagement with a corner. He missed him at the end, but had him set up if Fletcher would have broke off inside of him. Strepo grew up in South Florida, dreaming about playing for the Kings. Ahead, Fletcher, just a little bit short of the first down. As a matter of fact, we talked to Xavier Restrepo during the week. He said, if I'm being totally honest, I came to Miami to play in this game against Florida State. A lot of disdain on both sides of this rivalry. Third down and three. Williams on target, first down, and lots of run after the catch. Jacoby George, what a nifty run. After the reception, he took it all the way to the 25-yard line. Kalen Deloach made the tackle. It was Kevin Knowles who whiffed, and that sent George on his way. And also a broken tackle against Fentrell Cypress initially, who had the coverage underneath. Knowles just out of control as George puts a little shimmy and gets to the outside. He's got great run-after-catch potential. He's been a little bit inconsistent with his hands the last few weeks. His 42nd catch of the season. 
Second on their team behind Restrepo's 60. Williams given a nice pocket and it's incomplete. I almost hit the umpire as he fired toward Richard Smith. Azaria Thomas had the coverage. That's a good example of Emery Williams' maturity. Tried to get a shot play. They faked the screen underneath. Tried to run the wheel up behind. It's well covered. He didn't throw into coverage. He gets back to his next player in his progression. It's incomplete, but it wasn't a turnover, which has been a huge problem naturally the last few weeks at quarterback. Tyler Van Dyke. One turnover in his first four games, 11 in the last four, necessitating the change. Fletcher stood up and driven back. Cypress there. With help from Malcolm Ray. There's Van Dyke on the sideline, available as the backup today. And Shannon Dawson, the offensive coordinator, Greg, told us, we feel like the other 10 guys are playing well, and we've seen it here. He said it wasn't like Van Dyke's getting pressured and hit all the time. He was getting clean pockets, not making good decisions, not making good throws. The guys were open, and he just wasn't hitting his mark. And at that point, you have to inject a spark. And they believe that Emory Williams is that spark. So far, he's looked pretty good, even though the numbers don't necessarily reflect it just yet. One out of four, but it was a 43-yard play. They blitz him up the middle, and he gets smushed back at the 33-yard line. Kalen Deloach, a 10-yard sack. And he just comes right in between the left guard and the center. Clearly a bust in protection. You have to protect inside out. Cohen stayed wide. Lee stayed on his guy inside. Deloach is unblocked right up the middle and makes this field goal much more difficult for Miami. Borgalis, one of the best in the country, 17 out of 19 this season. And he hooked it. There's been a few wide lefts and a lot of wide rights in this rivalry. Borgalis. After making 14 in a row, has now missed his last two. Just a little bit. You see a bounce on the ground, and the laces are straight back. As Borogales hits it, hooks it a little left. And you see Aaron Feld, the strength and conditioning coach, talking to Hutchinson after the fact to trying to iron that out moving forward. A rare miss by Borogales, the candidate for the Lou Groza Award, which is brother. Jose won for Miami in 2020. Benson got hit hard. Words that will be repeated today on both sides. It was Francisco Maui Noah, better known as Kiko. Their second leading tackler transfer from Washington State so he could play with his brother, the freshman offensive lineman. He's their best blitzer. He's also their signal caller. Has a great understanding of the communication necessary in Lance Gidry's defense. So a very important piece there at the second level for the Canes. There's Lance Gidry. First year at Miami, they changed out both coordinators. They have seven new full-time assistants of their ten from last year when they won just five games in Crystal Ball's first season as head coach. Benson fighting for every inch and got with a yard to the first down. Oh, well, we mentioned uh, part of the story. Benson played for Crystal Ball. And as you can see, no lingering bad blood. And when we talked to the Florida State coaches yesterday, they said you know, they understood why Mario Cristobal wouldn't take Benson with him. You go to a new place, as the Florida State staff did when they came from Memphis here, you, know, you don't want to bring too many of your guys from where you were before because you want to win the trust of the guys you're inheriting them. and. Let them know that you believe in them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Deion Sanders famously said, I'm bringing my own luggage, and it's Louie. But if you do that too much, you can certainly have an impact on the culture that you're going to try to create and the buy-in that you might get from the guys that are held over from the previous staff. So he decided against it, and it's worked out great for Florida State as Benson's developed into an All-American type of player. Leonard Taylor is the injured player, and he's walking off. Sophomore from Miami. Top 
10 SEC showdown tonight on ESPN. It really is one of the games of the weekend, really the game of the weekend. Number nine, Ole Miss, and number two, Georgia. Bulldogs, two-time national champions, 26 wins in a row. 7 o'clock on ESPN between the hedges tonight. Trey Benson, the running back on third down and one. Travis. Travis has the first down. All-time leader in total offense at Florida State. By far the all-time leading rusher among quarterbacks at FSU. And a similar play they ran earlier on third and short where they pitched it to Benson. This time, the defense does a great job of keeping contained, but Travis stays patient, goes right inside his left guard, Casey Roddick, and has just enough for the first down. Lawrence Toafili in. Yeah, the running back behind Travis. Seven nothing Florida State. Toa Fielder. Good tackle by Maui Noah. That might have gone a lot longer. Three yard gain. 100% right there. If Maui Noah doesn't make that play, Toa Fili has really nobody behind Maui Noah. So if he doesn't make that one, that was a critical, critical shoelace tackle. Feely, excellent number two running back. Redshirt Jr. out of St. Petersburg. Final minute of the opening quarter. Travis, caught, first down. Inside the 35, Johnny Wilson, the six foot, seven inch wide receiver with an 18 yard game. Man, is it nice to have Johnny Wilson back? Came back a little bit for the Duke game, but left in the third quarter, missed the last two weeks. But he's such a physically imposing target there with a great catch radius, so it's going to be huge to continue to utilize him off play action and take a shot or two against undersized corners for Miami. Wilson did not play in the last two games, and Keon Coleman did not play last week at Pitt. Travis going deep for Coleman, and it's just out of his reach. Jadis Richard had the coverage. Transfer from Vanderbilt. Miami's been a little bit beat up at corner the last couple weeks. Jaden Davis and Daryl Porter went out of the game last week. You referenced earlier, Sean, that Daryl Porter is not available today. Davis is. It seemed like talking to Mario Cristobal and Lance Gidger, they might feel a little bit better about the younger players on their roster. Damari Brown in particular, number six, he's a freshman. He's six foot two, and Jadis Richard, number 25, just in coverage a moment ago, he's six foot one to go up against six foot four Coleman and six foot seven Wilson. Flag down. Might have been a timeout first. The officials are going to talk about that. There is no false start on number 88. Savoie, the referee. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Such a great rivalry for the 30-year stretch from the late 70s to 2006. 30 meetings. At least one of these two teams was ranked in 23 out of 30. 13 of the 30, both were ranked in the top 10. There was a seven-year stretch from 1987 to 1993. It's Jaheim Bell with a 15-yard pickup. He's had an active first quarter that is about to end on that play. is to make sure we keep moving the sticks. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank it is Florida State moving the sticks at the moment. First play of the second quarter, 7-0 Seminoles. Jay Benson finally gang tackled after a two-yard gain, and Coach Cristobal right on it. 
12 rushes and 10 passes. Good balance in that play calling for Florida State. And they make everything look the same, too. So all the runs are married to the passes. And then after you run one of each, they have their curveball off of it as well, where it might be a screen. So Mike Norvell, very thoughtful in his game plan every week. And does a tremendous job making the defense face a lot of eye violations where they're looking at one thing, it's going another direction. Leonard Taylor back in for the Miami defense, and that throw is incomplete. Looked like a throwaway. In the general direction of the Michigan State transfer, Keon Coleman. We talked to Lance Guidry yesterday, the defensive coordinator for Miami. We said, what's the biggest challenge facing Florida State? He said, those two big wideouts. <laughs> I can certainly understand that. I mean, those guys are so difficult. Even when they're covered, they're open. But here on a third down and long, Lance Guidry normally in the red zone, he likes to bring a lot of pressure. Knowing that those receivers are so dangerous, will he put his defensive backs on islands by bringing the house? They are crowding the line of scrimmage. Only one man Bain is down in a stance. It is to the end zone and incomplete. Off the hands of Keon Coleman with the true freshman, Damari Brown, in coverage. He's really been coming on in recent weeks. Trying to work a back shoulder. It's well thrown, just a little bit high for Keon Coleman. Tried to flip his hips late. He's well defended by the freshman, Damari Brown. It's a tough matchup. They're in one-on-one -on -one against what's likely to be a first-team All-American. So here's Ryan Fitzgerald. He made his first 10 this season. He's 11 out of 12. You saw the only miss was a shorty at Wake Forest. And that one's good from 33. And the junior Fitzgerald having an excellent season. Ten nothing for Florida State and Jordan Travis, who uh, most people now have right in the thick of the Heisman Trophy conversation, along with the two West Coast quarterbacks, Michael Penix Jr. of Washington and Bo Nix of Oregon. Earlier today, JJ McCarthy, his victory against Penn State, really their first test of the year, kind of unimpressive with the numbers, ran the ball effectively, but. He might be trailing those aforementioned three now after what was kind of a so-so performance throwing the football. It was a Michigan win at Penn State without Jim Harbaugh. Here, the game controlled by Florida State. Just 51 yards in the opening quarter for Miami, and 43 of them are on a pass play. No chance for Brashard Smith to return the kickoff of Fitzgerald. Here's a look at today's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Prudential, number one, Ohio State, number two, Georgia in action tonight. Terrific win for Michigan. Washington in a big one out west, trying to stay undefeated. Oregon and USC tonight, Texas and TCU on ABC. Alabama winner at Kentucky. Boy, oh, remember all that angst? About your alma mater at the beginning of the year. Oh boy, it's really going downhill. <laughs> they figured it out, haven't they, Sean? Yep, they, uh, I think old Nick Saban knows what he's doing. Emory Williams. Can they get some sustained offense? Fletcher. The pick up a four, Molly. Well, Sean, this Veterans Day is extra special for the Williams family. His son, Emery, starting for Miami in front of his father, Stephen, who served in the Marines on Operation Iraqi Freedom, and he also went to Florida State. And they come from a proud military family. Both Emery's grandfathers served, and the family moved around a lot growing up. Uh, Stephen served in 19 countries on four continents. And uh, as you mentioned, he's one of seven boys, ranging from 23 to 7. So for the Williams family today, about honoring the sacrifice of our veterans, but also celebrating their son's accomplishments. Sean. There's chagrin because there was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Miami, we believe, on Brashard Smith. And it was well after the whistle. So you can see the ball carriers down on the field. And oh, boy. There's Brashard Smith, who kind of hits the defender, Greedy Vance, right in the head in front of the official. So it wipes out a game, 
And it's second and 21. The Canes offense really struggling. They go to a quick screen and it works well again. Jacoby George has been all their offense so far. He had the 43 yard catch and run in the first quarter. He has 25 here in a first down to the Miami 40. And a terrific job by the right tackle, Francis Maui Noah, number 61. He gets a piece of the defender and it's off to the races. A little earlier, Jacoby George broke the game open on that third down conversion catch and run. That's another one there where he shows off the speed. Reedy Vance is the injured Florida State defender back up defensive back. And some angst in Western New York. Thought the Bills were going to be better than five and four. Mark Fletcher. A one-yard pickup on first down. See a shot of Renegade there. Scott Johnson, our great director. Renegade is a Broncos thing. Oh, time that all together. Makes so much sense. Yes, that makes perfect sense. It's next-level thinking mm -hmm. from the great Scott Johnson. Emory Williams, the 19-year-old true freshman. Again, give it a nice clean pocket and the pass batted down by Joshua Farmer. Protection's been excellent for Emory Williams so far with the exception of the sack where they had a little bit of a bust up front as Farmer goes vertical and makes the play. This will be a spot though to watch those excellent defensive ends from Florida State. Jared Verse and Patrick Payton, especially on the right side, working against the freshman Maui Noah. Peyton is stand out at knocking down passes at defensive end. He wears number 11. There's Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator. Williams steps up and goes down in the arms of Kalen DeLoach. His second stand, that one for five yards. And he's watching Mark Fletcher to make sure he doesn't escape. As soon as Mark Fletcher engages, though, with the defender, that frees up the Loach to be able to close and drop Emory Williams for another third down sack. Fifth-year senior Deloach, one of their team leaders, their leading tackler. Yeah, perhaps their most important play of the year when he blasted Cade Klubnik. The strip sack picked it up, ran it in, 56 yards for a touchdown to tie that game at Clemson. They were fighting from behind all day. Won it in overtime to end the seven-game losing streak against the Tigers. Dylan Joyce punt wound up very well for Miami out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Van Dyke, an experienced player and talking to the freshman Williams. So and not surprising he'd be helpful. Yeah. And Shannon Dawson said, you know, it's a very close quarterback room. He's going to be supportive of Emory Williams. And Shannon Dawson really challenged Tyler Van Dyke. Hey, be the best teammate you could be under the circumstances. And having that extra set of eyes with your backup quarterback on the sideline is so valuable to a, to a young guy that the game is probably moving really fast for at the moment. 11 and a half to go till halftime. 10 nothing Florida State. Trey Benson, the running back. Travis faked it to him, just did get it off. It's Jaheim Bell. They have every kind of screen you can run. Their first play of the game last week against Pittsburgh was a tight end screen. We referenced earlier how the run game sets up the play action and then their change up is a straight downhill run play action. They bring Bell across the formation. He chips the defensive end, and then you throw it to him on a quick screen. They have so many different variations of the looks to make it difficult on the defense. 16-yard gain, and that one dropped for a loss. Trey Benson hit behind the line of scrimmage by Wesley Bessaint. Three-yard loss. Bessaint just beating those pulling offensive linemen and Bell and Darius Washington kind of turning up field, not seeing the Saint, and he drops Benson behind the line. Oh, 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 oh. 
Play clock running down too long for Mike Norvell's comfort, and he uses his second timeout. timeout. Florida State, there's seconds. 30 seconds. Please reset the game clock to 10 minutes. Our official stat spotter up in the press box also served in the U.S. Army. We thank all of them. Lawrence Toafili. Short gain. Matter of fact, it's a loss of a yard. Kiko Maui Noah, Jacob Lichtenstein in there for Miami. Under 10 minutes to go in the half. 10 nothing Florida State. Mike Norvell calls the plays. They average just under 40 points per game. They're ninth in the country in scoring offense. They're trying to set up a screen. Faked it in one direction, threw it the other way. And Ja'Kai Douglas dropped by K.J. Cloyd. So all that practice against screens paid off for Lance Guidry's defense there. And that was a good tackle in the open field Miami by seven Cloyd. Is now 37. Seven is 37. So difficult to defend Mike Norvell with all the different screens and faking it one way, throwing it back the other way. You have to be very disciplined defensively. At that time, Miami settled in, made the stop. Alex Mastromano on the punt. You want to guess where he's from? Australia. Australia is correct. <laughs> is that the athletic trivia question? No, it is not, but we're going to have that in just a moment. Xavier Restrepo back deep for it. Play clock almost ran out. Good kick. And a fair catch made by Restrepo. At the 19-yard line. 55-yard punt. Here's the Aflac trivia question. You want to know who was the only time an unranked Miami team defeated a top 10 Florida State team? That is the situation here today. Is number 17 in the country. Is that a hint? <laughs> Scott Johnson, Phil Dean, showing Bobby Bowden's signature. This is Bobby Bowden Field. I have a feeling that was a hint. Something tells me that he uh, he was patrolling the sidelines of that number 10 Florida State team. Miami was as high as number 17 when they started 4-0, including a win against Texas A&M. They have fallen out of the rankings. Bashard Smith is seeing more time at running back. He's primarily a wide receiver. Shoved out by Zarya Thomas. Six yard gain. You want to guess? I'm going to out a year. I'll say 97. Not close. <laughs> 1980. <laughs> Pitcher's duel. That's the answer to the Aflac trivia question. 10 to 9. Howard Schnellenberger was in his second season and Bobby Bowden his fifth. Jim Kelly scored on a one-yard run. Seminole scored late, went for two, didn't get it. Donald Cheney, who we featured back early in the year. And we have a highlight from 1980. I'm guessing that's Jim Kelly on the one-yard run. Would assume so. And there's the late touchdown. Rick Stockstill through the touchdown pass. They went for two and didn't get it. Miami the winner. These two schools have met every year since 1969. Cheney again. Lead to head to the 30, well short of the first down marker. They'll need eight more. Patrick Payton made the tackle. So far, Florida State's been excellent against the run. Not a lot of room for any of these talented Miami running backs to really get going. Of course, the sack yardage will kind of affect the rushing numbers as a whole, but there just hasn't been a lot of space. Miami only two field goals in Raleigh against the Wolfpack last week in a 20 to 6 loss and they both came in the first 17 minutes of the game. They didn't score in almost the all the uh, final three quarters all the final three quarters. Isaiah Horton to catch not enough for the first down. So it's been a long time since they put any points on the board. Shannon Dawson's the offensive coordinator in his first year here. Third and medium. They're almost always 
trying to design something to get it in the direction of Xavier Restrepo. He'll be lined up in the slot to the top, working against Jerry and Jones, who's back from injury over a week ago. I think Florida State will be real mindful of that matchup. They rushed five. Williams takes off running, lowers his head, and gets the first down. And that brought his sideline to life. No slide as parents love it. Six yards and a first down. And a good decision by Emery Williams, too, and great effort. Knowing how far he has to go to gain, the collision takes place right at that line to gain. And him lowering his shoulder is ultimately what gives him the momentum. His parents have to love it, but hold your breath when your quarterback and your son take off and engage in that kind of contact. I'm just guessing based on her hat and his shirt, they have a good time. <laughs> they they look like fun people to hang around with. Absolutely. Here's Cheney, a nice bounce to the outside, and now some speed. Inside the 35 of Florida State to the 34, a pickup of 26. And you're going to see two Florida State defenders really work inside, which really allows a ton of room for Cheney to get to the edge. Tatum Bethune slid way too far, assuming that run was going to be an interior run. Cheney bounces to the outside, and Miami run game finally finds some open, open field. That is the longest run of the year for Cheney, a redshirt sophomore from Homestead. And so many of the players on these two teams from South Florida. Play fake Williams, throwing in a single coverage, lots of contact, and they let them hand fight with no flags. Colby Young and Azaria Thomas. And I think Mario Cristobal wanted the flag, and he's not going to get it. Tried to go with a stutter go, just a little stop. See if you can't get him on the double move. A ton of contact there, and the crowd reacting strongly, believing that Colby Young threw down Azaria Thomas and root to the ball. But I think that's probably a good no call with both guys grabbing onto each other. They can both commit penalties. <laughs> exactly. Basically an offsetting ball. Both did something, so we're not going <laughs> to flag either one. Here's Cheney again. Donald Cheney inside the 10 and out near the 5. 29 yards on the run. That's a new long for the season for Cheney. And a perfect kick out block by Cam McCormick. Cheney hesitates just right behind it and then gets to the edge yet again. And they stick with Cheney. Of course, he was a part of the most memorable play of their season. They were off to that 4 0 start. They had Georgia Tech beat. All they had to do is take a knee. But Coach Cristobal decided not to call for that. Cheney fumbled. Georgia Tech went down the field in four plays in the final minute to hand Miami about as excruciating a defeat as you could have. Cheney was in tears afterwards. And Mario Cristobal said he never should have been in that situation. Mark Fletcher's in now. Trying to jam it off left guard, and he was stopped after a minimal game. Gilbert Edmond, a transfer from South Carolina, back up along that deep defensive front. Fabian Lovett, another backup transfer from Mississippi State in there, too. Third down and goal. They're just two out of five on third down. The Knowles defense held Pitt to 0 for 11 on third down last week. Fletcher, the true freshman, is the running back alongside the true freshman quarterback who fires, and it is caught for a touchdown. Jacoby George. plays 82 yards they took more than six minutes off the clock and you 
saw the poise and accuracy that the coaches talked about regarding Emery Williams. The extra point good by Andy Borgallis. Second career touchdown pass for Emery Williams. He threw one in their win against Clemson, the only other game he started. George, the touchdown, the seventh of his career. We have a ball game. Madison Square Garden in New York City with the light heavyweight main event. The prelims begin tonight at 8. The main card at 10 on ESPN, ESPN to Cortez, and ESPN Plus. Emery Williams just threw the first touchdown pass allowed by Florida State here at home this year. It's their first touchdown in a couple of weeks since they scored an overtime to beat Virginia. Florida State was the only team in the country that had not allowed a touchdown pass at home this year. Now they have. Here's Kevin Nagandi after the touchback. Sean, Capital One halftime report minutes away. Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagandi here. Washington trailing right now at home. Alabama rolling on the road and Michigan just mad and angry. It was a dominant performance. Think about this, Kev. The quarterback didn't throw the football the entire second half. They didn't need the quarterback. Almost like an Alabama team that won the title quarterback <laughs> by one Greg Knuckle. Highlights and reactions, Greg and Sean, coming up at the half. <laughs> Before Booger even started his comment, I knew where he was going with it. I mean, I knew without question he was going to take a shot at me right there. That was a lot. <laughs> well, you can handle it. You're tough. <laughs> National championship winning quarterback. Jordan Travis with a flag down, likely for a hold. He ran away from the pressure. And then a flag came out. Jeremiah Byers might have had too much of a grab of Jared Harrison Hunt. Holding. Offense number 63. 10-yard penalty. First up. And Byers, a transfer from UTEP. Transfers have really helped improve the offensive line. It was a good bull rush there by Harrison Hunt just walking Byers back and as soon as Travis starts to leave the pocket you see Byers' right hand grab the jersey and it was called well there by the official first penalty on Florida State Miami has been assessed three Travis forced back in trouble and taken down A safety. The ruling on the field is that the ball was in the field of play and the quarterback was tackled. Mm -hmm. the second down. Replay official John Bush will undoubtedly be taking a look at that. Here's a look from the progressive pylon cam. It's really close. Florida State's lining up to snap the ball. I can't believe that, that yeah, now the officials are going to stop it. I mean, you have to. What are you waiting for? So we'll step aside. When we come back, we'll let you know what Matt Austin thinks. 2 0 Adam Savoie, the referee, said the ruling on the field stands. I have no idea how, so maybe Matt Austin can explain this. When the knees well, go the down, the ball's clearly in the end zone. The only thing I can think is at first contact, his feet were in the end zone, but the ball was in the field of play. But as they continued down the line, as he ran, the ball naturally came back into the end zone where he was tackled. I think this should be a safety also. I completely agree. I mean, it's when he's down, the ball is not beyond the plane. I think it should be a safety. That's absolutely brutal. The replay official is John Bush, and the conference will have some explaining to do. Just getting out of the end zone is Benson. Well, the momentum has changed, but it would have changed more significantly had that been ruled a safety. Now it's probably time for Miami. Timeouts. Start thinking about timeouts. Miami, their first, 30 seconds. Please put 141 on the game clock. Thank you. Trying to think of what to say. 
I, mean, I don't know how you explain that. Yeah. Uh, I, outside of them just assuming the forward momentum and he was pushed back, but I, it didn't seem that way. Jordan Travis was going backwards, so he wasn't forced back. I, I think that was a safety. I think that was a missed call for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the problems, I think, with replay. Here's a view from the pylon. I mean, he is retreating himself back into the end zone. He's not being pushed back in the end zone. And when he gets taken down, he's in the end zone. The ball's clearly in the end zone. As a reminder, too, the ball has to, it's like a touchdown, has to break the plane out of the end zone. Out. Correct. <laughs> fully across the line. I don't think it was. Let me try to get an explanation from the replay booth at the half. Here's Travis out of the end zone, juggling, and a drop by Johnny Wilson on a ball behind him. So Miami should get the ball with great field position and plenty of time. A minute 37 and two timeouts. Really off the mark there by Jordan Travis. Has really improved his accuracy, but that time, I mean, you have a six foot seven receiver and you miss him by three yards. He almost reels it in, but. That was a big play because now Miami can save one of those timeouts as the clock is stopped. Alex Mastromano. His third punt. This is very returnable. And finally out of bounds across the 32-yard line. Now, quick word from Cheez-It. I'm rg 3 z See you next time. All right, who changed my name to rg 3 z Me? It's a great combo. Like college football and Cheez-It. You like? You better believe it. And how will college football fans feel? You're going to be feeling the cheesy. Yes! change on the punt return. We don't know who number 36 is. They don't have one on their roster. Another one of the issues of college football that really should be addressed at some point. Duplicate numbers and guys changing numbers for particular plays. Timeout. That's Florida State. Ray Smith. Their third and final. Their starting center walking off. He's been injured off and on this season. Now on defense. A timeout used by Florida State Seminoles really out of sorts right now. Very much so. I mean, unable coming out of the timeout to properly get their correct personnel on the field for a two-minute situation. This would be a good opportunity for Emory Williams. Praised for his poise. That's why he's starting this game. Has been making good decisions. Has had a nice start to the game. Even though the numbers wouldn't necessarily reflect it. He's got to be really smart here in a two-minute situation. You're already in field goal range. Can't take a sack under any circumstance. Just got to kind of continue to methodically pound away. I think that Miami, too, with two timeouts at their disposal, they can theoretically run the football here if the opportunity presents itself. Well, prior to this, Miami's average starting field position was their own 18. Their first possession of the game started at their own two. They're at the Seminole 31, another screen intended for George to flip it up in the air, incomplete. Brady Vance, the crowd thought he picked it off. Really on the field is an incomplete pass. And now Emory Williams wants his teammates to line up quickly. Sorry, Thomas deflected it. Probably don't want him to review that last play. That's the reason for the hustle. And they are going to review it. Field of an incomplete pass is under further review. Well, Emory tried to get them up there fast enough. It does look like that left arm is underneath the ball. It, does it slide around right there? It does move around a little bit, but it does look as though that left arm, though, is underneath it. It, just, it was called an incomplete pass on the field, so it, for it to be overturned, there has to be indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt. It looked like to me, Sean, like he was able to kind of corral that as he turned to his side. 
The uh, punt returner on the last one was Ray Ray Joseph. Ordinarily wears number five. So if this one goes against Miami from the replay booth, they're really going to be hot in Kane's nation. Uh, understandable. I mean, first one, safety definitely felt like it was a missed call. This one is a little bit closer. It's just whether or not he has control as he goes to the ground. Anxious moments for Coach Cristobal. 1.20 to go. He has two timeouts. Florida State doesn't have any remaining here in the first half. Emory Williams at quarterback. True freshman from Milton, Florida. Recruited for a while by FSU, but they fell off after they got a commitment from a top freshman prospect in Brock Glenn. Here's Donald Cheney, the star of the second quarter. Down to the 13-yard line and a first down. Patrick Payton, the tackle. And there's only five defenders in the box defensively for Florida State. They have five blockers, obviously, along the offensive line. That's just really bad numbers from Florida State. Trying to take away the pass. Miami recognized it was a similar alignment to play before. They hand it off, and it's a big game. Six carries for 80 yards for Cheney. The second quarter carried only twice for four yards last week at NC State. They're on the move with 45 seconds to go, trying to take the lead. No gain there. Tatum Bethune, the senior linebacker from Miami, out of Central High School and went to UCF and transferred to FSU. And Miami now has one timeout left with 37 seconds to go. Seconds to go. Tomorrow, the women's college basketball triple header. Starting at one on ABC, number 14, Maryland, number six, South Carolina. At three on ABC, second ranked UConn against NC State at 5 p.m. on ESPN. Ninth ranked Indiana against number 15, Stanford. You know what we've seen so far? Kate Clark's still pretty good. Oh, my goodness. She's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. It's wild to see LSU lose the season opener as well. So a lot of drama right now in the early going of the season. Rashard Smith, they're trying to get him more touches as a running back. Primarily a wide receiver. He's on the left side of Emory Williams. Williams, plenty of time, is pass complete to Smith. A little bit behind him that might have cost him the first down. And perhaps even a touchdown. So it's third down. Less than a yard with 20 seconds to go in the first half. And Fletcher in big trouble. And they'll have to let it run all the way down and call the timeout and kick a field goal to tie it. And that's what just ball is going to do. Tatum Bethune, the initial contact on that third down stop. And just all discombobulated is Jared Verse off the left-hand side. He beats Riley Williams, the freshman, who's coming across the formation trying to kick that defensive end out. Verse too quick. He makes a big stop there behind the line of scrimmage on third and short. So Florida State was ahead 10 to nothing and looked like they had it in cruise control. Miami doing very little on offense. But the game has turned. And now Bora Gallus, who missed from long range in the first quarter, will have a chance to tie it. Watch the snap and the holds closely here because the last time the holder, Will Hutchinson, kind of bobbled it. And the laces were back, which caused that ball to hook left. So got to watch the operations here. 27-yard attempt. 13 for 13 inside of 45 this year. 
And they'll head to the locker room tied. What else do you expect when it's Miami and Florida State? That were breaking free, so it was really nice adjustments from Miami staff to lock things up in the second half. Onside kick by Florida State. Up for grabs, and Miami has it. Mike Norvell trying a surprise onside to start the second half, perhaps change the momentum, and it didn't work. It was recovered by Frank Latson, a backup wide receiver. And it was a really well-placed onside kick, but how about Latson going up and high-pointing that ball? Looked like it was going to be an easy recovery initially from Florida State. Ball hangs a little too long and allows Miami to recover. A big play by Latson. Transfer from Clemson, an excellent field position for Miami. Trying to pick up where they left off in the second quarter, and they do. Mark Fletcher right through the middle of the defense for 20 yards. And a great job by the center and the right guard, Matt Lee and Inez Cooper, just driving the defensive tackle off the ball. Fletcher's able to cut right off of that to the inside. And a great opening play for the Hurricanes. Florida State 129 to 1 in the second quarter. After it was 125 to 51, Knowles in the first quarter. Fletcher dropped for a one yard loss by Akeem Dent. And Greg, we should make the point that onside kick wasn't a response, wasn't panic by Mike Norvell, John McLuchas. We were told yesterday they had an onside kick in that they were going to use. They thought it would work, as you said, it very nearly did. And so th this wasn't, oh my gosh, we're on our heels a little bit, let's do something. They came into the game intending to use that onside kick. And, and it was executed well. It was just a better play by Ladson to reel it in amongst a swarm of seminal pickoff men. Second and 11. Fletcher, the running back, Emory Williams gave it to him. He bounced off a hit from Tatum Buffoon, but couldn't get away from the second one. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, I asked Miami head coach Mario Cristobal about that non-call on the apparent safety at the end of the half, and he immediately started yelling expletives, not suitable for air. He was very emotional, saying that there were two calls in the first half that felt unfair to him, but he said his team stayed composed regardless. He said the key to success for them was running the ball well, and quarterback Emory Williams running with the football, fired up their sidelines, fired up their team, and he reminded his team in the locker room, winning this game is why you came to Miami, guys. Third and 13, at the very least, they're in field goal range to take their first lead. Crowd making it really tough. And a timeout used by Miami. Timeout. Miami. Their first. Tied at 10. We're early in the third quarter in Tallahassee. They pick sides in this rivalry. And since 2000, 17 meetings decided by eight points or less. That's the most in any rivalry in college football. Last year was a big blowout in favor of Florida State. 45 to 3. Now Miami, a two touchdown underdog, trying to pull off the upset. And perhaps they ran that screen once too often to Jacoby George. They lost three, and that'll make it a longer field goal now, about a 50 yard try for Warren Dallas, who has plenty of legs to make it. That time, Shannon Dawson anticipating pressure from Adam Fuller in the Florida State defense, trying to knock him out of field goal range and decide to play coverage. They do a good job rallying up on the screen, drop it behind the sticks. 51-yard attempt. As long this season is 50 against Texas A&M. That one's hooking, and it's good. Just did sneak inside the left upright. Struck there for Corey Gallus. As soon as it went through the uprights, he turned over to the Florida State sideline and gave him a bit of a piece of his mind. Not often when you see the kicker <laughs> looking at the opposing sideline, talk a little smack. He's from Miami. His brother was a terrific kicker for the Canes as well. 
so many of the players we talk about, you know, usually when we have the meetings with players and coaches during the weekends, they kind of downplay it. Oh, it's another game. we got to play under control. This was totally the opposite. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, Cam Kinchins, the safety for mine, when we talked to him, he said, we're going to stop the train. So they're talking about winning the ACC, going to the college football playoff. Jordan Travis is going to win the Heisman Trophy. We're going to stop the train. They embrace it. They embrace the hate in this rivalry for sure. And given the lack of love that's on both sides, I'm surprised that the game's shockingly been pretty clean. Not a lot of extracurricular. Had the one earlier in the game against Bashard Smith, but there's no love lost between these two. And a fair catch made on the kickoff by Deuce Span. So some anxiety in this crowd here. They're not accustomed to seeing this. Florida State down by three in the opening minutes of the third quarter. Really need to get Trey Benson going again, too. I mean, the second quarter didn't have many opportunities to get him involved. He ran with a lot of urgency there in the first quarter where he was effective, but he to continue to feed him. And hasn't worked much up the middle. Maybe try some things on the perimeter. Keon Coleman does not have a catch. He's been targeted three times. I think they try to get him involved. Here he is. Spins after the catch. And goes down about two yards short of the line to gain. Jadis Richard made the tackle. Right, get your playmaker started in the second half. Keon Coleman was quiet. And that was the biggest concern for Lance Gidry was his matchup against Keon Coleman with his corners. And got to use him a little more here in the second half. One of the best receivers in the country. His first catch for eight yards. Travis over the middle. Ja'Kai Douglas. They're trying to run him down. And they finally do near the five-yard line. James Williams saved the touchdown. 62 yards on the play to Douglas. And you look at all those Miami second-level defenders, the linebackers and safeties, all looking in the backfield. Douglas sneaks right behind him on the RPO. No one's there to cover him, and he takes off for a big game. He had a career-high 115 yards receiving at Pitt last week on six catches. He had only two catches all year prior to last week's game, but without Coleman and Wilson, he stepped forward, and he just did it again. First and goal, Travis shovel pass off an offensive lineman in free. Leslie Bassane had pressure. That was a bizarre looking play, and it's going to be Florida State's ball. And number 44, the freshman Reuben Bain, just completely ate that up. They're trying to get the running back out into the flat and give him a shovel pass, but the freshman just blew up the left side of the offensive line. There was nowhere for that back to escape. Dane is a stud. Already twice the ACC defensive lineman of the week as a true freshman. Second and goal. Here's Coleman down the sideline. Stood up and driven out of bounds. Cam Kitchen said they're going to stop the train. He stopped the train and paid the price. Still down. Timeout an injury to a defensive player. And that was a big collision. Ball thrown just a little bit behind Coleman as Kitchens delivers a big shot there on the sideline. Ten and a half to go third quarter. Walked off to the sideline. He's gone to the tent. Was involved in a very scary collision earlier this year in a game against Texas A&M. Had to be carted off the field. Missed a couple of games. Thank God that wasn't as bad as it looked at the time. But he's one of their best players. First team all-conference last year. It's third down and goal for Florida State. They had first and goal at the five. One for the last four on third down. Morlock, the tight end, the motion man. It's a keep by Travis. He's in trouble and stacked up. A loss of two. Back to the four-yard line. The stand by the Miami defense. 
offense, and it'll force a field goal try by the Knowles. Jaden Harris, who just came in for Kenshin's involved in the play. And a great play by Jafari Harvey, too. He hesitated, squared his shoulders, made sure that Travis pulled that ball, and the rest of the Miami defense came to the rescue. That was well defended by the edge defender. Jaden Harris, the redshirt freshman, just his seventh tackle of the year. Here's a 22-yard try for Fitzgerald to tie it. And it's 13 apiece with 9.32 to go. In the third quarter, big play by Harris. One of the talented young players, Florida State has built it back up to national prominence. Miami feels like they're on their way with the way they're recruiting. With guys like Harris. Here's a look at the All-State playoff predictor. We made our choices. This is how we think it should be right now. I haven't changed my uh, top four. Did you? No, mine's the same as last week as well. And mine's based on the eye test, not so much on the resume at this moment. That's kind of how I think the teams are playing. Michigan's the best, Georgia second best, Florida State three, followed by Washington, Ohio State, and Oregon at six. But a Until lot. you knock out the champ, I'm going with the boxing thing. Hey, I knock out hey. the two-time <laughs> champ. Uh, George, I think, to me, would solidify number one uh, win, win tonight against Ole Miss. I'm with you on Ohio State in the eye test. And to me, that win against Notre Dame's lost a little. They have three. Yeah, the offense continues to be very inconsistent. And I move Texas up ahead of Oregon. I just think their resume is the best among the one-loss teams. Big hit on the kickoff coverage. Rashard Smith running it back. And it was Ashlyn Barker who delivered the blow. And that's just another hit when these two teams get together. So, Greg, I can't overstate how impressed I am by Emery Williams, where guys just completed six passes in the game. Two freshmen, second start, this environment, rivalry game. The number's not great, but he has been cool as a cucumber. And there's been a drop or two as well, a tipped pass, so he's been really good. And the biggest thing, the decision-making has been outstanding. They came in expecting to run. He runs. Not sure it was by design. He had to run away from Shaheen Brown. Galen Deloach, like saying as he made the tackle. When we talked to Mario Cristobal yesterday, he said, Emery Williams reminds me of the guys we had back in the day when we were great. The Steve Walsh is the Gino Torres. Poised, accurate, a leader. Very detail-oriented individual. That's how Mario Cristobal described him. Mature beyond his years understands how he fits into the office. He needs to be the star, but he needs to be a distributor, and he's played well in that role today. Donald Cheney ran for 80 yards in the second quarter, helped turn the game in favor of Miami. He's ahead for four. And here comes a big third down. Florida State has the crowd back into it. After the tying field goal, Cheney went soft. Fletcher, who is their starter these days at running back, is in. Best guy on the perimeter so far for Miami today is Mitchell Colby George. Been really good on third down as well. So if they could find a one-on-one -on -one matchup for number three at the top of the screen, that might be the direction that the freshman is looking at. Covered by Renardo Green, who's the semifinalist for the Jim Thorpe Award as the best defensive back in the country. They brought pressure. Fletcher ran by some of it, but not past everybody. Braden Fisk on the play. Tatum Bethune there as well. And a quick three and out. Looks like that was pretty well blocked initially, but Fletcher just ran right into contact. If he would have bounced that to the outside, much like Cheney did on a couple of carries earlier in the game, looked like there was a lot of space. So not a great run there by the freshman back. Dylan Joyce to punt for the midway through the third quarter now. Keon Coleman back for the punt. Brown one back 72 against Syracuse. Had never returned punts until this year. He stepped away from the ball. The Miami players think it touched Coleman. 
And it looked from here like it did, but Keon might have gotten on it. I think there'd be much more of a celebration on that Miami side. And one of their guys got it. Well, one of their guys came up with a flag. But the officials say Florida Florida State ball. As the ball is recovered by Florida State, first down, timeout. 40-yard punt. We mentioned Coleman hadn't returned punts until this year. It definitely hit him, but he got back on it. They had some injuries at that position. He volunteered. He's been pretty good before now. Kinkins was in the medical tent, athletic screening staff, tending to a lower body injury. They took his shoe off, taped his right foot and ankle, and he was walking gingerly, tried to put weight on that right foot, shook his head, but told everyone he would try to go, but he is not 100%, guys. All right, Molly, thank you. On first down, Lawrence told Feely could not break free from the tackle of K.J. Cloyd. He held it to Cloyd to a one-yard run. He's a transfer from Louisville. Really athletic player, and that time tackling open field, or tackling Toa Feely as he was breaking free is difficult to bring him down at an angle. That was well defended. Is Jordan Travis? He's dragged down in Miami territory near the 38, 26-yard play. And that was a really nice route too by Wilson. He gets on the toes of the defender, Damari Brown, sits it down, moves away, slides to the sideline. It's a well-timed throw and good catch and run. Three for 51 for Wilson under duress. Travis got it off and incomplete, intended for Wilson. With Damari Brown in coverage. You have to expect Florida State to continue to try to get the football. Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman. Wilson coming back after a couple week absence. So I have to wonder how many reps he's going to be able to take. But the vulnerability of Miami's defense is on the perimeter at corner. So they need to take advantage of that matchup. Florida State had minus 18 yards rushing since the second play of the second quarter. 38 on that one for Benson. With 27 yards all day prior to that run. Florida State goes back on top after the extra point and by Fitzgerald. It's 20 to 13. And just perfectly blocked up front on the GT counter. The left guard, Casey Roddick, he kicks out the initial defender. Darius Washington fills inside. Benson breaks right off those blocks going inside out. And he takes it the distance after that. Just extremely well executed on the counter. A play that Florida State has used forever since Mike Norvell has taken over. Haven't run it as often this year, but find success with it there on a big play by Benson. State ranked number four in the country. Trying to get to 10-0. They're 9-0 for the first time since 2014. That was the last time they played for the ACC championship. Guaranteed a spot in the title game. They've already clinched it. This is their last conference game of the year. Louisville has the upper hand to be their opponent. Emory Williams and Miami with some tempers flaring over by the Kane sideline now. <laughs> Miami. 
Miami trying to spoil everything for Florida State. It's, there's a lot of football still to be played, Greg, but I think a lot of people around college football think a one-loss team for Florida State would have a tough time making the play. They need other things to unfold in, in their favor to make the play. Yeah, they would completely lose control of their own destiny because they could be measured against a one-loss Ohio State or Michigan that wouldn't win their conference. So a game of vital importance here for the Knowles. Yeah, Murray Williams been battling the noise all day. There's a blitz. It's picked up. Williams down the sideline a little too far for Jacoby George. Sorry, Thomas had the coverage. We mentioned Williams' numbers not impressive. In fairness, he's not alone. Florida State came into the game. Their opponents completing only 48.4% of their passes for the year. Only one other team in the country has held their opponents under 50% completion percentage starting today. That was Ohio State. It's very rare. And it's remarkable, too, considering how many young guys that rely on there in the back end. A lot of freshmen and sophomores that are playing pivotal roles and performing at a high level. Here comes another blitz from deep. It's picked up. Williams a little bit too far out in front of Xavier Strippo, who still does not have a catch today. Came in with 60 for the year. That's just the second time he's been targeted today. Brady Vance the coverage, third down and 10. to go in the third quarter and another important third down for the Canes. Shannon Dawson came over from Houston or is the offensive coordinator for Dana Holgerson. They have to involve Restrepo here. He's their go-to guy on third down. Been really quiet the last couple weeks. But he's the best route runner. He's the guy that can create the most separation in man situations. So see if they can't get a target in the direction of number seven for the Cates. Third down and eight, pressure again. Williams throws it up for grabs and it flutters incomplete. Trying to get it to Isaiah Horton. Kevin Knowles was the most important blitzer who forced the quick lob by Emery Williams. Another all-out pressure called by Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator. That's two consecutive third downs. They get flagged for holding on the last one. This time, Knowles comes free off the edge. He's on blocks. Williams knows he has to beat that defender with the ball. Just can't get it out quick enough with enough. 
enough velocity to drive it down the field to give his receiver a chance. Dylan Joyce to punt for the fourth time. Teon Coleman misplayed the last one. Line drive kick sends Coleman over by the sideline. And a five-yard return of a 48-yard punt. They'll start at their own 20. 13th annual State Farm Champions Classic is Tuesday at the United Center in Chicago. Number two, Duke, takes on fourth-ranked Michigan State in the first game at seven. Then the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings. That's a pretty entertaining between game show. And after that, back to the hardware, hardwood. Number 16, Kentucky takes on number one, Kansas. That time of the year, just about everything in action. <laughs> we got all kinds of action. Looking forward to it. Design rollout for Jordan Travis in the flat. Coleman has it. And a gain of six. Very clear here in the second half that Mike Norvell is really putting, getting, getting, getting Keon Coleman involved to the highest priority. That's a couple drive starters where they've targeted him to kind of get him into the ball game. He didn't have a catch in the first half. The fake to Toa Feely. They set up another screen to Kyle Morlock. Another tight end screen. He's out of bounds shy of the 40-yard line. Transfer from Shorter. Small college in Georgia. You can play, they'll find you in today's transfer portal. And Florida State's done very well in the portal. Back shoulder throw. Johnny Wilson, another transfer from Arizona State. And a nice back shoulder throw here. Wilson going up over the top in coverage by Janus Richard. And a good throw by Travis. Holds up his big body receiver. He reels it in for a nice game. 21-yard game. Florida State up by a touchdown. They led by 10 in the first half. And Dean back up defensive tackle swung down Trey Benson for a loss of two. Play similar to the one that Benson scored on a moment ago. Just a little GT counter going from left to right. Dean sniffed it out and made the play in the backfield. Approaching two minutes to go, third quarter. Pressure brought by Lance Gidry. Another back shoulder throw dropped by Wilson. That was put in the perfect spot. He couldn't corral it with Devontae Brown, the older of the two Brown brothers in coverage. And he couldn't place the ball any better than that. It just looked like Wilson kind of lost track of the ball, got his hands up really late and couldn't reel it in. But that was perfect ball placement there from Jordan Travis. Really started to make his name as the Seminoles quarterback in this game two years ago when he brought them back late to beat Miami. C.J. Campbell in a running back. He goes out and a sack Travis and a big sack all the way back into Seminole territory. Francisco Maui Noah. And Maui Noah, this is just really well designed there. You see two defenders on the left side slide inside. Maui Noah wraps right around him. Travis about to break the pocket. Maui Noah is right there, and he drops him for a big third down stop. But how big was the drop by Wilson? A little bit in field goal range. Now here's Mastromano. Punt for the fourth time. Ray Ray Joseph, we believe, is the deep man in the never ending switching of numbers. Oh boy, great bounce for Mastromano. And they'll spot it at the 550. 
51 yards, perfectly placed. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, time now for our All-State Good Hands play of the day. And Boog, Michael Penix, look at this throw to Rome Odunze. I mean, nobody throws a better deep ball in college football than Michael Penix. I mean, the roll to the left and then a dime to Odunze. You know who could? Greg McElroy. I believe in him. 33-28 no. to score. Never. <laughs> Not in 17 mile an hour winds, I can promise you that. Uh, maybe if that wind's behind me, perhaps, but no way. That was a heck of a throw. Back and forth they go. Florida State control the opening quarter. Total domination by Miami in quarter two. Almost all Florida State here in the third quarter. Mark Fletcher just barely across the line of scrimmage, stopped by DJ Lundy in the final minute of the third quarter. First half, some of those holes up front for the Miami running backs were massive, especially when bouncing it out to the right. They tried to go back to that a couple times. Cheney tried it to drive a go. Right there, they tried it again, and Florida State's adjusted a little bit to not allow that big backbreaker out the back door to the right side. Emory Williams, for those who joined us late, making his second career start in place of Tyler Van Dyke. He has struggled mightily in recent weeks. Fletcher battles across the 11. Another skirmish along the far sideline. Rivalry game against Florida, which is a couple of weeks away. First play of the fourth quarter, Miami third and four. Down by seven, they can't complete the quick slant to Jacoby George with Bernardo Green, the cover man, and they'll punt. Green and Dawson looking on a little puzzled. Tried to hit Jacoby George on a little hesitation slant. Green just draped in coverage, even if he would have completed the pass. I'm not sure he would have had enough to gain enough yards to pick up the first down. That was well defended. Dylan Joyce has had a good day punting. Low-line drives that have driven the return men back. It's Keon Coleman again. That one not his best. Coleman telling everybody to get away from it. And it takes a great bounce for Miami. They uh, touched it. The officials have spotted it around the 29, even though it rolled all the way down to the 16. Here's a look at today's hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. And it's Trey Benson. First play of the game. Pressure called by Miami. He's the outlet. Gets a nice completion early. A little later in the first quarter, Benson driving his way into the end zone for his first touchdown. And then perfectly executed up front by the 7-0 offensive line. A little counter play. He breaks it to the right, then crosses field back to the left to find Pater for the second time. He's been terrific playing against his former coach, Mario Cristobal. Two touchdowns for Benson. Here comes yet another screen, and they blew it up with the pressure. He tried to get it off to Keon Coleman. It was K.J. Cloy, the linebacker. Well, these two teams coming at each other on defense. Man, and this was a pretty low hit, too. As you can see, George Travis trying to kind of jump over Cloyd, who was applying the pressure. Got his foot kind of caught up on Cloyd's shoulder pad and landed a little awkwardly. He jumped. That's why it's not a foul. And Austin tells us. On second and ten, Travis oof, that stood up, bounced off that, and finally swung down. It was James Williams who delivered the high hit and then has something to say to Travis. Williams, veteran safety, junior from Fort Lauderdale. Part of that excellent safety tandem with Kinchins. They're also best friends. Well, an important third down now, a minute into the fourth quarter for Florida State on third and six. The previous play is under further review for a potential targeting foul. And you see Travis, who really is not mouthy, waving at Williams as if to say goodbye. You're about to get ejected for targeting. 
We'll see if that's the case when we come back. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Well, Jordan Travis waved goodbye to James Williams, but he's still in the game. We'll ask Matt Austin about it in a moment, but here comes third down and six. Florida State, early moments of the fourth quarter. Leading by seven, the pass is incomplete for Toa Feely. Matt, what would you think on that targeting, no targeting? Well, I'm a little surprised they didn't call targeting because the defender lowered his head. Looked like he hit the crown of the helmet right on the tip of the face mask. Then it turned the quarterback's head sideways. Uh, I think this is targeting. I agree, Matt. I mean, it looked like the crown of the helmet. That's what initiates the contact. That should have been targeting. It's as simple as that. That's another missed call. I don't understand it. Florida State has dropped five passes today. Mastromano angling for the far sideline. Effectively so again. They'll spot it at the 16. And in the interest of full disclosure, and we had the controversy about the safety, the non-safety. Mario Cristobal, I rate at the half when he talked to Molly McGrath, and understandably so. I think everybody you and I have corresponded with who knows anything about football thought it was a safety, except the officials in the replay booth. We asked for an explanation from the replay booth at the half. We were told they were going to come to our booth to offer an explanation. They did not. We just called the replay booth to ask for an explanation about the targeting, no targeting, no response. We're trying to mimic Florida State. These are two good screen teams. A look in one direction, a screen attempt in the other direction for Fletcher, and Gilbert Edmond broke up the play. Emery Williams is 0 for his last spot. And he took a big hit at the end of this as his head snaps back and hits the turf. Grabs his helmet immediately. Shaking it off just a hair, man. That was a little bit of a scary hit, the way that head recoiled against the turf. He's 6 for 17 for 81 yards passing. He had a touchdown, no interceptions. He hasn't made the big mistake. Mark Fletcher slides ahead for very little. Neither team has turned it over. And that's a big development, especially for Miami with all the turnover issues in recent weeks. The coverage in the second half of Florida State has been outstanding. Very, very small windows for Emory Williams to fit it into. And Adam Fuller has gotten more aggressive with his play calling as well. More pressures, more blitzes. Maybe things are spinning a bit for the freshman. I would throw a screen right here. By Miami, they've had success with that tunnel screen. I would throw one here and see if you can't get one of your receivers to full head of steam. Fuller brings pressure again. Williams behind Restrepo, who was open right around the line to gain. He was open, too. Restrepo working in man coverage against Jerry and Jones. Ball is thrown off target, probably because of the hit that Williams took from Jared Verse. Couldn't really drive through the throw. Kind of steered it in there, and it was off target. Wonder if the accumulation of the pressure is having its effect on Emory Williams. Third straight, three and out for Miami. Fourth of the game. Good punt by Joyce Coleman. Made the first few miss. Keon Coleman. The punter awakes. And took him down. Dylan Joyce saved the touchdown. move by Coleman to make Jaden Harris miss who was running down as the gutter and he's off to the races. Keon Coleman said okay if you're gonna open it up I'll try it. He had never returned punts. John Papucha said well we have a little concern he's one of our best players but he was really good at it. He told Coleman all I want you to do is catch the punt. Anything <laughs> after that is a bonus. <laughs> well there was a big bonus to the 10-yard line. 
Poised to go up by two scores again. First and goal. Travis the keeper. Dodge some traffic. Still on his feet and almost scored. He had one more tackle to break. But Kinchins dropped him after a seven-yard game. Oh, my goodness, Jordan Travis. Just a Houdini play here. Looks like he's totally wrapped up. Spins out of it somehow. Keeps his feet and nearly scores. What an effort by the quarterback. It'll be second and goal. There's an injured Miami defender. It's Jared Harrison Hunt. They have a second and goal at the Miami three-yard line with exactly 12 minutes to go. They have had trouble scoring touchdowns in the red zone the last two weeks. They've outgained Miami in this half 171 to 28. Travis, the fade, Coleman, flag thrown. He was being held by Devontae Brown. Pass interference, defense number seven. Foul occurred in the end zone by the the Bells placed at the two yard line with an automatic first down. Pretty easy call here from the official. Tough job there for Brown. When they say Coleman looks like what you want wide receivers to look like, he <laughs> surely does. There's no doubt about it. And Brown's had a bunch of pass interference penalties this year. That time again, doesn't even try to make a play on the ball. Easy call for the official. So first and goal. Benson goes in motion. DJ Lundy. Linebacker lines up as a blocker, trying to lead the way for Travis, and Miami was not full. Corey Flagg dropped him for a loss. Loss of four. Corey Flagg right here. This is really well done. Navigating through the wash. There's nobody there for him, and he drops Travis for a big loss. Florida State, no hurry now. Thinking at the very least they'll have a field goal and a two score lead, so killing some clock. We approach 11 minutes to go. And that one for Coleman! Even while being held, he caught it for a touchdown. There is the flag. They will. There are few players in college football better than Keon Coleman when the ball is in the air. Contested catches are his specialty. There's absolutely nothing Damari Brown, the freshman, can do. The ball's well thrown to the outside. Progressive pylon cam gets a good shot. Easily seeing the feet inside. Keon Coleman stands up and flexes after the impressive catch. point good by Ryan Fitzgerald and it's the largest lead for Florida State 14 points all of us on our crew working this week and today with heavy hearts after the passing on Monday of a great woman Carmen Johnson at the age of 86 Mrs. Johnson the mother of our director Scott Johnson lived a remarkable life, 50 years teaching dance to boys and girls in Ohio after she attended the Dance of College Conservatory at the University of Cincinnati. Our crew wearing ribbons, green ribbons in memory of Mrs. Johnson today. Green was her favorite color. And I think the reason it hits all of us so hard, the reason we know how special Mrs. Johnson was because she raised an incredible man. A lot of those people you saw have been on this crew for 25 years because of Scott Johnson, a man of remarkable goodness and character. And that came from the example of his parents, Carmen and Paul, now reunited. Mr. Johnson patiently waiting for a couple of years for Carmen. Sir. 
reap her eternal reward for a life beautifully lived. She's a special lady, and obviously it's, it's with heavy hearts for all of us, and you said it perfectly, Sean. I mean, Scott Johnson is a phenomenal human being, and your greatest legacy as a parent is, is your children, and for her to have raised such a special individual, I know she's looking down very proud today. We're thinking about you, Scott. We're thinking about mm -hmm. the Johnson family. Our hearts ache, but yet we rejoice. So here comes Miami really up against it now. They wanted to rely on the run. They've thrown it only 18 times, but down by two scores. And with under 11 minutes to go, you think, Greg, they'll have to air it out more often. Cheney stuffed by DJ Lundy. Fabian Lovett. Emory Williams at his first start. He was able to rally Miami from behind. Down 10 to Clemson in the fourth quarter a few weeks back. He's been in this position before, but the offense has been stagnant here in the second half. Haven't been able to run the ball, and the separation by the receivers has been really, really poor. The pressure continues. Why change? Pass intended for Colby Young. Dentrell Cypress in coverage, and Williams is 0 for his last seven. At some point, they got to try something downfield. I mean, they have thrown everything within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. And these Florida State corners and safeties are just squatting on everything. They got to try something downfield to soften them up just a bit. So the pressure look from Adam Fuller's defense. And it just did snap it. And that one hits the umpire. Trying to get it to Isaiah Horton. And it hit Johnny Forte. Unfortunate here for Emory Williams because he did have Colby Young open, but it looked like the ball was going to be low anyways. Late on the play clock, getting it snapped just in time. Excuse me, he was targeting Isaiah Horton. Like that ball was going to bounce anyways. Just not very accurate here in the second half. So it's Coleman back deep. He has taken over the game here in the second half. That one's out of bounds. A 45-yard punt for Dylan Joyce. You're watching ESPN Afternoon College Football on ABC presented by CF all over Oklahoma State, 45 to 3 in the fourth. Back to you, Sean. Yeah, maybe a bedlam hangover for the Cowboys. Jay Benson, the ball carrier, Florida State, after some anxious moments in this game, now with a two score lead, the ball, and they'll just try to run some time. They've been running the ball real well these last couple drives, too, as Benson's starting to get going, and got to wonder if fatigue is starting to set in on the Miami defense. Travis, deep drop, throws deep, and Coleman could run under it. Coleman was going to break open, but... He was working on a deep V back to the high left pylon. So the aim point for the quarterback has to be up the field. And he kind of threw it up the field. But it looked like there initially it was Devontae Brown where he kind of grabbed the left shoulder of Coleman. Might have altered the route just a little bit. Brown as soon as the ball sailed one. over his head, he turned toward the officials with his arms outstretched. He did get grabbed. Ja'Kai Douglas banged down by Kinchins. Six-yard game. Miami's secondaries played most of the day without Jaden Davis, one starting corner. He's been in and out, but mostly out. Daryl Porter, the other starting corner, has not played at all. They have started every game this year, corner for Lance Gidry. But they're battling. 
with some inexperienced players, including the freshman Damari Brown. Sixth punt for Mass Tremano. What a day he's had, averaging 51. Both punters have been excellent. This one's another good one. Ray Ray Joseph, the fair catch at the 20. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, Miami quarterback Emery Williams has been really frustrated in this fourth quarter. He's been emotional and hard on himself, telling teammates multiple times, that's on me. I need to be better. He even apologized to wide receiver Xavier Restrepo, saying, I need to get you more involved. I'm sorry. And backup Tyler Van Dyke had to calm him down at one point, grabbing him by the shoulders, saying, just breathe. Calm down. You got this. So Williams frustrated. We'll see if he can respond here, guys. He's the new starter, taking over for Tyler Van Dyke, who has started over most of the last three seasons. They've had a lot of problems of late. They made the switch to Williams. He's one for nine this half. And a lot of movement along the lines, and they stop it. Ball start. Offense, number 61. DC Maui Noah, the true freshman. Great tackle. That's Eric. Alex Mirabal, the offensive line coach, alongside Mario Cristobal. Relatively clean game between these two programs. Maui Noah that time sensing pressure and flinching just before the snap. Williams. Winds up, throws it in a traffic, and it's caught! It got through two defenders to Jacoby George all the way. Touchdown! 85 yards and no flags. How did this ball get through two defenders? And Jacoby George, I don't know how he saw the ball that was perfectly covered initially, yet a safety over the top. And somehow, Jacoby George able to put his hands out, reel it in, and there's no one between him and the end zone. How about the concentration from George, and he's off to the races. That was an incredible throw and catch by Miami. What a huge day for George. Williams had 81 passing yards all day. He had 85 on that play. His parents love it. Melissa and Steven. <laughs> Seven children, all boys. George, five catches, 153 yards, and two touchdowns. And we have a game again with 8.22 to go in Tallahassee. Spot to play Florida State in the ACC championship game in Charlotte. It's a touchback, and it's a one-touchdown game. We go back and revisit the play a moment ago that made it a seven-point game. Look at Kevin Knowles, and look at the angle here. I mean, this is just atrocious in the back end. He almost runs underneath. But he didn't play the ball Jacoby or George. Make the tackle. He just like he was trying to get out of the way. I, I don't understand what he's doing. You got to stay over the top. I mean, it's cover two man. That guy's in man coverage. You got to stay deeper than the deepest. And he went underneath it for whatever reason. I don't know what he saw that would lead for him to do that. But that's a big mistake there by Kevin Knowles. Game pressure back on Florida State. They've gone silent on offense. 19 yards on their 10 plays in this quarter. Benson. Escape with a stiff arm. Has a first down out to the 42-yard line. The 17-yard run for Benson, giving him 80 yards for the game on 14 carries. A nice run there by Benson. There were two Miami defenders there and only one blocker. He set up his blocker and bounced it to the outside where he found some open space. Not killing time. They snapped it with 20, trying to get back into a rhythm. Benson run out of bounds by James Williams. He stopped it after a one-yard game. Another backdrop to this game, the recruiting battle. Mike Norvell told us yesterday they have 112 recruits here, many of them among the top recruits in the country, a lot of them from the state of Florida, and many of them who will decide between these two schools 
So the winning and losing may not be a huge factor in it, but recruits these days care a lot about style of play. Travis throws, caught Wilson first down. Bobby Brown in coverage on the Kane sideline. They thought Wilson pushed off. And this has been something that's been there all game long, working against Brown, the freshman. The top of the route, maybe a slight shove, but didn't seem too significant to be able to create that separation. Not good with the no call there. That's an example of the style of play. Both coaching staff said when you're recruiting the top cornerbacks, they want to watch you play a lot of press man coverage. And both of these schools do. Tough run by Toa Feely. Hard earned four yards before KJ Cloyd got him on the ground. Leonard Taylor down again. He was down earlier in the game. So we've talked, Greg, a lot about this rivalry. You know, for three decades, it really was the most meaningful, impactful rivalry in college football from about the late. 70s till about 15 or 16 years ago. They're both trying to get back there. Uh, Florida State's there, in my opinion. No question. They're back among the best teams, and you can see the progress being made by Mario Cristobal and this Miami group as well. Uh, I think that they are much better than their record would indicate. And, and six and three, but you look at the Georgia Tech game, that's essentially a game that you should have had. They gave it to them. Uh, completely. And then the other self inflicted mistakes that they've experienced since October 1st 16 turnovers. Nobody in college football has more. So they can really look at themselves and say, we've been in just about every game. We've had several opportunities to win big games, and we've given a few away. So they've made tremendous progress this year. Mario Cristobal deserves a lot of credit, but at 6-4, and four, if they can't pull this one out, definitely be disappointed to have let a few off the hook. And well, the reality is when they came to the ACC in 2004, I think a lot of people thought these two schools are going to dominate the conference. That hasn't happened. Matter of fact, Miami's never won the conference. They got to the title game in 2017 after a 10 0 start, won the Coastal, lost to Clemson in the conference championship game, and lost to Wisconsin in the Orange Bowl. Florida State hasn't been in the title game since 2014. Of course, they did dominate the ACC in the Bobby Bowden era. And over the last decade, it has been Clemson at the top of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Second and six, Benson running into a loaded box. Loss of one, Besaint made the tackle. Big third down here for Lance Gidry's defense. Field position, of course, but the clock, especially with the new clock rules that have been adopted this year, you get under five, that time starts to really evaporate before your eyes. So, massive down here for the Canes. Florida State is go for its last seven on third down. Something like pressure from Gidry. You're looking at Johnny Wilson one on one at the top. and swung down Travis. Third sack for Miami. Gidry brought the pressure and his defense delivered. Maui Noah, the sack. And the offensive line just completely overloaded as Maui Noah just splits right between the left guard and the center. Mo Smith tries to get back and get a piece of him, but Maui Noah just way too quick through the hole. And a massive stop for Lance Gidry's defense. First-year defensive coordinator came over from Marshall. One of the colorful characters in college coaching, a Cajun from Welsh, Louisiana. Distant relative of Louisiana Lightning, Ron Kidry. Master Model's punt and a fair catch. They tell us now 36 is Brashard Smith. Pick a number and wear it, don't wear it. So here they come with a chance to march down the field and tie it despite a 33% completion percentage from their starting quarterback.
you have enough time, you can stick with the ground game. It doesn't have to be flinging around all over the place. They've rushed for 127. They've passed for 166. Obviously, some big plays in the passing game on just seven completions. That is thrown away. Should have been intercepted right at Greedy Vance Jr. And Williams lucky to get away with that. Still not a turnover in this game. And might have gotten tipped by Patrick Payton, who's applying pressure, gets that hand up at six foot five, gets a piece of it, and Greedy Vance almost reels it in for the interception. Great play there by Patrick Payton on the edge. He has seven pass breakups this year. That is the most in the ACC among non-defensive backs. He does a great job of getting his hands up and batting down balls. Second and ten. Williams takes it down short. Rashard Smith driving right into the yard to the first down marker. It'll be third down and one after a nine-yard play. Miami has not had a lot of success running the ball in the second half. Just 31 yards on the ground, and half those came on the first play of the second half. So depending on the look defensively from Florida State, you definitely could decide to throw the ball here given your ineptitudes up front in the second half. Neither team stellar on third down today. Miami's three out of 13. Under four minutes to go. They run it unsuccessfully. A loss of about a yard for Cheney. And what will Mario Cristobal do here? Under three and a half minutes to go, only two timeouts. He's gonna go for it. Standout offensive lineman prefers power football. I would move the pocket here if I'm Shannon Dawson. I would roll my right-handed quarterback to the right and see if I can't slip Restrepo out in the flat off a little bit of a rub route. Restrepo's been virtually invisible. The play of the season to date for Florida State in the timeout call by Miami, leaving them with only one. Timeout. Miami, their second. Their second. Which makes this conversion, Greg, even that much more important with only one timeout left now if they don't get it. It is almost certainly ball game over. Not that it wouldn't have been the two timeouts. And Dawson having a conversation with his quarterback, but... Also looking at Restrepo, which would indicate that he's likely going to be the target here. How do you create some separation for him? The second half by Florida State in the back end has been excellent. I would move that pocket. I'd sprint the quarterback to the right. I'd see if I couldn't get a little pick to create a little more separation. Make it a nice, easy pitch and catch for their quarterback. Placed as the starter by Williams today. Emery's parents looking on with concern. 
They tried to get Restrepo into the flat, similar to what we described. Emery Williams leading with his throwing arm, lands on it awkwardly. Great effort trying to reach the line to gain, but he grabs that arm immediately. And it really looks uncomfortable, man. I hope he's okay. So Tyler Van Dyke, who's had an up-and-down career at Coral Gables, will come back in, even with all the recent troubles. Still a 67.7 completion percentage, which is best in the ACC, but he's been a turnover machine in recent weeks. The crowd looking at replays, they think maybe Williams didn't get the first down, that his knee was down before the ball made it to the... Line to gain. The knees down. It looks like right there. And he fumbled it out of bounds as well. It looked like the fumble came after he hit the ground. It does look like that right knee was down as he kind of stretched forward. It was hit initially. I think he's probably going to be a little bit short based on that look we just had a moment ago. Well, it has been a controversial day for the officials both on the field and particularly in the replay booth. And now another decision for John Bush, the replay official. I feel just sick to your stomach mm. as you see your quarterback on the ground writhing in pain. Arm looking very awkward as he went to the ground. And left his body on the line there on a fourth and two. And his parents look on. Can't even imagine what's going through their head. Just an awful scene here in Tallahassee. Yeah, Sean and Greg, I'm right next to Emory Williams. I can hear him loudly crying in pain. And athletics training staff was looking at his left arm in his left wrist area. They had to cut off his play call wristband, and right now they're putting an air cast on that left arm. So it's not looking good for Emory Williams. I guess if there is good news, it's not a head or neck injury. It, what was such a thrilling day for his parents is now agony. parent that has a child that can't even imagine what those guys are going through man just just awful it was a valiant effort remains to be seen if it's the first down or not I'm sure they're still looking at that looked like a broken play live but I think they just collided it looked like it was supposed to be a run fake all the way the play stands is called so Williams has made the first down and on the play, it was kind of a broken play. It was well defended initially by Florida State. They tried to slip Restrepo out to the flat, and there was just nobody there as he kind of got cut off and couldn't get out into the area he was trying to occupy. So, so many dramatic twists and turns over the history of this rivalry back in 1951. Wouldn't it be something if Tyler Van Dyke was replaced as the starter this week. Marches them down the field. Junior from Glastonbury, Connecticut. It was his second full season as a starter. He was the conference rookie of the year in 2021. And he took over as the starter three games into the season. Had an excellent year. And uh, Williams obviously in a lot of pain up around his right shoulder, still in tears. Right arm. I mean, he just won over every single teammate, though. Really. And he already it. had from what everything the coaches told us. No doubt about it. But to leave your body on the line, totally exposed, stretching out with your throwing arm in a gotta have it situation, a desperation fourth down. You don't get it, you lose the game. He put his body on the line and sacrificed for every single one of those guys in white jerseys. And He'll be a hero in that locker room, regardless of the outcome of this game. 
His parents are going to head down toward the locker room. It's Tyler Van Dyke, who last year battled through an injury plague season. They went three and six in his starts, but he got them off to that great 4-0 start. He's one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the country at the beginning of the year. And only one turnover in the first four games in which he played. Then the last four, 11 turnovers, 10 of them interceptions, one lost fumble. Two and a half to go. They're down by seven, and it's a drop by Restrepo's and a day he would like to forget. Ball just a little off the mark from Van Dyke, too. One that you would hope that Restrepo would reel in. Maybe a little bit of jitters, though, from the quarterback coming in cold off the bench. Five targets for Restrepo, no catches. 60 catches on the year coming in. On the delay, Fletcher. Didn't get much, and it's going to use a lot of time. They only have one timeout left. The clock is ticking, and they're not moving very quickly. Let's go, says Shannon Dawson. Third down and seven. Two minutes to go. Florida State trying to go to 10-0 and, and stay on track for a berth in the college football playoff. Adam Fuller showing pressure in the dancing around, forced a false start. False start. Offense number 61. Five yard penalty. Third down. Francis Maui Noah, better known as CC in the Miami football program. Third Miami false start. Just flinched again as those Seminole defenders rushed up to the line, anticipating pressure, and the clock is running. We need to hustle here. No urgency from Van Dyke, who's been in these situations before. You have to go 80 yards. You have a minute and a half to do it, and only one timeout. They snapped it at three on the play clock. Back shoulder throw, and it's caught for a first down. Colby Young. For 14 on third and 12. And his first catch of the day couldn't come at a better time. He's got a lot of length at six foot five. He turns around on the back shoulder and corrals it. He's a great job reeling it in. Mark Fletcher, the running back. To the sideline. Another catch out near midfield. And they blow it dead for four being stopped at the 49-yard line of Miami. Colby Young stopped by Renardo Green. 15 more. And a great job of positioning his body. It's really well covered initially by Renardo Green, but Young slips behind him and makes the catch. One minute to go. And that pass knocked down by Jared Burst. A terrific defensive end. One of the 12 semifinalists for the Lombardi Award is the top offensive or defensive lineman in the country. Sack numbers have been down for first this year, but this is where you make your money as a defensive end at the next level. You can end the game by dropping the quarterback. So keep an eye on number five, Jared Verse, and Patrick Payton on the other side, number 11. And Dyke into a crowd, trying to get it to Restrepo. Greedy Vance had the coverage. Restrepo and Van Dyke been together a long time. Their former roommates lived together for three years. They couldn't connect on the completion there. Third down and ten. Got to think, if you get one-on-one, -on -one, it's been good so far for you on this drive. You're going to look in the direction of Colby Young on the back shoulder at the top of your screen. And Dyke, there it is again. The back shoulder they knew was coming. And Renardo Green broke it up. So here's the ball game right here. Fourth down and ten. Chris 
the ball wanted a call on the defender Green. And now a timeout called by Florida State. Timeout. Florida State. Their first. 30 seconds. Miami one for one on fourth down today. Six for 12 for the year. Here's Shannon Dawson here. The last few snaps defensively from Adam Fuller have been cover two man. Man to man all the way across underneath with two safeties up over the top. You got to find a route that can beat that right here. And usually, when you get cover two man, you want to work your slot receiver on an outbreaking route. Leverage by the defensive back in that coverage is going to be slightly inside leverage. So you've got to look in the direction of Restrepo on an outbreaking route if they line up in the same coverage they've been in the last couple of plays. And Dykes two out of six since coming in on this drive for 29 yards. Both completions to Colby Young. Fourth down and ten. And Dyke rolls away from pressure in trouble. Just throws it up for Graves and it is intercepted. Jerry and Jones picked it off. Malcolm Ray put the pressure on. And Van Dyke had to throw it. And they did exactly what we thought they might. They tried to get Restrepo on an outbreaking route against the man coverage. And it looked like Restrepo was open. Van Dyke's got to throw it right now. That's open enough in a fourth and ten situation. Instead, he tries to force it back across the middle. And it's intercepted. Just a poor decision there from Van Dyke. And I don't know what talked him out of trying to give Restrepo a chance on the outbreaker where he had to step on the defender. And sportsmanlike call against Florida State after the play. It's the first turnover of the game. And fourth down and running out of time. He had to throw it somewhere, but as you said, perhaps not the best choice. And that has been a part of the numerous turnovers he's piled up in recent weeks. Bad decisions, and then when he's made the right decisions, he's just made some poor throws. Thrown into a very difficult situation. And Florida State is going to beat Miami for the third year in a row. There is a flag down on the snap. Jordan Travis will become the first Florida State quarterback to win as a starter three years in a row against Miami. Adding to his legacy. Legal substitution. Defense. 12 men on the field. Five yard penalty. First down. The state will go to 10 and 0, and it should be 11 and 0. They play North Alabama. No offense, North Alabama fans. Next week here, and then a rivalry game at Florida in Gainesville to wrap up the regular season. Then the conference championship game, most likely against Louisville. Thank you. Thank you. The team they did not play in the regular season, and a very good Cardinal team that has one loss all year. They're excellent. And they're really good at the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively. So if that's their opponent in the ACC title game, they get a win. We're marching back into the playoff for the first time in a while. Miami will not use its timeout. The ascension back to prominence continues under Mike Norvell. What a job he has done.